uh, loser of this will get third place. You talk about a contrast of styles. Three, two, oh, yeah. One, go. Okay. Here we go. Loser's finals. Winner goes on. Loser goes home. Excuse me? This is... Oh, this is Battlefield form. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say. This is... Well, all right, then. I saw that pineapple at the bottom. I'm like, oh, no. Got something out. Something is going to... This, is this even a Kirby song? There's no way to confirm. <laughs> okay, whatever. It's like you go to the Kirby stage, it's like at least whatever. Kirby has a lot of variety with their mu with its music. I will say that. Like yeah. I mean, maybe not so much in the, from like the 16 bit days, but definitely when it comes to later games and all oh, that yeah. stuff when they were trying to come up with the Meta Knight remixes and like some DDD's themes and stuff. 100%. I love Nintendo's music selection. They really do such a good ah, job. Ah, this is a Robobot song. Okay, that makes sense. That's one of the few Kirby games I actually didn't get around to play. And uh, with that... Uh, what song know, is this? This is from Robobot. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so Venia taking first stock. Ooh. This is going to be hard, because I know in Smash 4 this was one of Pac-Man's hardest matchups. Uh, I think they said it was it was the hardest matchup. Um, so, you know, it's just the fact it's just like you have such a fast character, and the fact he's able to like come down with safe on block moves, you know, like when you're trying to get something to happen to reverse into your own uh, situation, the last thing you need is them using safe on block moves. Yeah, but I mean, there's, uh, I'm not really oh. sure how it's supposed to get in. You're trying to unlock a... Uh, oh, yeah, there's that, too. The Hydrant will activate counters because it, for some reason, counts as an active hitbox or some oh, the universe. Coming out. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of wonder if uh, maybe playing John Numbers and being forced to go on the attack a little bit more uh, took Sinji out of his rhythm a little bit. Now all of a sudden he's dealing with a character that goes a mile a minute in, uh, in Venya. It goes 0 to 60 and with the quickness... I tried to I mean, was, seal him out with that. Yeah, uh, there was some uh, there was some potential for shenanigans there, I yeah. would say. The substitute doll, which by the way is adorable. It's very cute. Okay, so... On the same stocks, but you know, if Sinji wants to bring this back, he's got to get on the stage. That and, would be a good start. Wall yeah. jump, make it back, and that hydrant, good movement in order to avoid it, but. All right, makes it on stage. Uh, almost takes stage control. Ooh, he's looking at, doing a good job right now. Staying center, I like that. Only pulling back when he needs to. I like that he went for the cross up to return to center. That's what you need to do. Like, don't let them corner you. All right. It is interesting to watch these two play because when you're talking about uh, Sinji and Venya, obviously you're talking about polar opposite game styles. Yeah. But Venya is interesting in that, I mean, he's almost being forced to sit and watch what Sinji is going to do, how he's trying to deploy his defense, trying to get any sort of read that he can on this brick wall of a player. And Venya is... Uh, in that sense, kind of forced to uh, read and react. Luckily, he has the character to do it, but you know that he likes to force the initiative Ooh. right off the bat and not have to rely on the rhythm of his of his opposition. That was an excellent capitalization uh, from that late uh, bell hit. However, it wasn't enough to, to get out that stock. Which is actually kind of unfortunate for Sinji, because that, that would have really like changed the tides. Ooh, I like that. Uh, Venia opting to just re-grab the ledge because he knew that you can't roll through the plat uh, the trampoline, so it would have auto put put him into the apple. Yeah, and that's uh, that's a matchup uh, matchup experience right there and awareness. Yeah, but I mean these two have played enough that they should probably know ah. that by now. Uh, yeah, hold that hold that 124. Why not? Venia in the driver's seat of this particular matchup. Down tilt, going to put him up on the platform. Sinji thought he had a little bit more time, but there is no escaping the water kunai coming out and taking that last stock. And all of a sudden, that is game number one between these two 
fine representatives of Deadly Alliance. So now as we go to uh, game number two, it should be interesting to see how Sinji is... Uh, Sinji is used to being in the position where, you know, he's he likes to make the game a little bit longer. He likes to test the patience of his uh, of his opposition. But your Venya, you don't have to do this, so why even play this game? The Pokemon Stadium we go for game number two. So as we head forward. Good start here from Venia. Yeah, hold this 41%. Why the hell not? And puts him in the blender. You're having a hard time landing this Pac-Man, generally speaking, unless you pull out some cheeky stuff. He pulled out the Fire Hydrant and nothing doing in that regard. Forward tilt. Sinji. Wow, you don't see him pull out the key this early all that often. Quite the sight, I have to say. Hydro Pump, not going to find its mark. And yeah, you're kind of fishing for tilts at that point, but nevertheless, you have a bit of an advantage on Sinji. Might as well take advantage of it. The roll, trying to get into position. However, Venya catches up just like that. Letting Sinji get himself set up, and once you get your feet planted, you better not be caught flat-footed or else Greninja. Definitely. A way to make you pay for it. Trampoline back up. There. Trying to take advantage of a misstep with the bell. However, no missteps to be found. This is Venya we're talking about. Yeah, this is going to be a difficult uh, battle for Sinji. If he's not able to get that early stock lead, uh, you know, he has to... He has to play catch-up uh, versus such a slippery, fast character. It's very difficult. And just like with how quick his moves are for Ninja, it's just like uh, gets on that quick damage. Whoa. That was either a misinput or he actually read that he was going to slide past him. She can't go through that. Oh, whatever. Seems like it, but either way. It and oh. that little cheeky water shuriken. You know what? They don't all have to be home run balls. Sometimes you just got to tag them. That counter. Yeah, I think he read that he was going to do like a fully horizontal counter. That would have put him above him. I was kind of thinking that too, but uh, nevertheless, an apple of day will keep the venue away. And it seems like that is the case here. Stock number one being taken by Sinji in this game number two. Yeah, finally able to even up the stocks, and this is where it's like he has to make it uh, matter the most, because if he can get get the lead, he can play his game and try and make something happen. Uh, but as long as he's playing catch-up, he's always going to be at, like, you know, deficit or uh, even, which is not a great position for, like, the type of play style that Pac-Man uh, has to play. He wants you to come to him, and like, Benny is very well aware that he does not have to do that if he's in the lead. Yeah, no, it's like, you know what? You're the Pac-Man. I'm going to make you come to me. Why wouldn't I? Yeah. And I'll just tack on this damage. I don't even necessarily need to go for big combos. If I really don't want to, I can wait and catch you slipping yeah. as you're trying to mix up your movement and outthink yourself. And uh, when you get Sinji out thinking... Uh, when you're out thinking Sinji, you're operating on another level, I will say that. Yeah. He knows it's oh. just like, you're Pac-Man, so I'll wait for you to try and come back, man. Oh, that might be... Nope, I found his way back to the trampoline, but died for it. Yeah, honestly, not a, not a terrible situation, all things considered, for Sinji, but... He is still at the disadvantage. He needs to uh, needs to figure out a way back into this thing and uh, really is not able to utilize the item play as much as he would like. And he realizes it because the minute that he pulls out an item, that means he's going to be approached by one of the characters with the, one of the fastest ground speeds of the game. And all of a sudden, he's throwing out aerials that you cannot contest because you do not have the particular fruit in the hand which with, with which to do it. Ooh, oh. That just becomes bad news all around. Going for the grab, not finding it. Drag down into the forward smash. Yeah. 
Good dash attack. Not connecting with that last hit of up air like he perhaps would have wanted. Hydro Pump trying to tee up Sinji for something that uh, he may not appreciate all that much. Back throw will put him back into disadvantage. Hydro Pump again, and he's looking again for those uh, for that series of kicks, that multi-hit aerial to confirm the kill. However, Sinji not giving it to him. Invasive with his movement, but there's only so long you can avoid what is uh, to be inevitable. And that is the fury of Venya's aerial assault. All right, things aren't looking too good for Sinji. He's just having trouble just catching him and just like trying to get him to play his game the whole time. Uh, he's basically just been playing Venya's game. Uh, so, let's see what happens. Opting to go to Smashville. Okay. Yeah, and I kind of get um, that. Yeah, this time this is actually a real change of pace because the stage is going to be much smaller. Yeah, and I kind of wonder how that's going to play out for uh, for Sinji. I mean, is he just going to... I mean, if he's going to be using those items, it's going to be a preview. Uh, I mean, he just gave a, a preview of how he's going to be using them. He's going to have to be off stage, and he's going to have to trust that Venya is not going to chase him to the ends of the earth in order, to, uh, in order for him to utilize it. He's going to have to be very... Uh, Oh, not I'm not like even sure this. what the right word is, but oh no, Sinji! All of a sudden, he's just getting throttled, man. He's at the he one gave time Vinya the advantage, and he absolutely did not need an advantage in the, this instance. The one time, because like the past two stages, he was like, "I'll I'll keep space so I can build up my wall," and this time he tries to change a pace with a smaller stage, and then gets an unfortunate SD like that. Now he has to play the uphill battle through like. Like, not even uh, from Benya's work, but just from a mistake of his own. Yeah, this, this is not uh, looking good. He's kind of petering out. Yeah, this pick, uh, he might have out, outboxed himself here. Not really sure what else to say about this, because, I mean, you're talking about you're in uh Okay. Oh. Wow, he, he tried to get cute cute with it, and uh, Venya showing no signs yeah. of wear and tear, and Sinji is... Uh, Going to throw in the towel. No moss, says Sinji. And Venya finds his way back in the grand finals. A chance of revenge against Jen. So once again, folks, I'd like to thank you for joining us here for the 32nd edition of Xeno Saga. We're proud to present it to you live here from Xeno Zero Games in the heart of Manhattan. I am Stu, the announcer. I am not from New York, but it's a pleasure to be representing this tournament and uh, certainly on the mic. And uh, on the mic and behind production as well. I mean, what what can he not do, folks? Devin from the House hey of 3000. Devin, thank you for all your help, and thank you for everything.